crowding out private investment, we're crowding out money available for investment, and we're paying higher taxes. And that's what's, that's what's bad about a, a continued uncontrolled debt deficit, is almost the same way as our economic output. The red here, the red represents current law. If we do nothing, if we just let the status quo go forward, we don't change spending, we don't change legislation or authorizations, this is how much debt to GDP we will have. You can just, you can see. Debt the deficit. This is debt. Yeah, this is debt. And the difference between debt and deficit is, is, is what? Do you know? Yeah, the debt is accumulated. The deficit is uh, each time. That's right. So if you owe, a, if you have a deficit of $1.5 trillion this year, that's just how much money you've overspent this year. And then that gets added into the overall debt. And so this is overall debt. This includes the deficit spending uh, from year to year. But if we do nothing, you can see where it goes all the way up by, by 2080 to 900% of the economy. That's just simply, uh, you, just, you won't survive it. The nation won't survive it. The budget that we passed is represented by this little green chunk right here. You can see where even it takes uh, until the year 2050 to actually get our debt to GDP ratio back down. Does the people in the house keep on voting um, to get a bill passed and then normally doesn't the house move up into the similar seats? Like what changes there? Shouldn't they be passing the bill now if they want to let house? <laughs> that, you're, you're, that, that is a great question. That is so, I mean, there, there seems to be some kind of a transformation that happens if somebody gets elected from the house and moves over to the senate. Uh, I mean, just the, the way the two houses are, are, are created. Uh, the two chambers. I mean, you've got the House of Representatives, which uh, is 435 people. Uh, it's, it's very rules-driven, meaning that every time there's a debate, uh, there's a rule that says what the debate, how long the debate's going to be about. There's a rule that says what amendments can or cannot be offered, and it's very, very by the book, very rule-driven. The Senate is, is it's different. Different rules, different, uh, different debate, free-flowing uh, debate. Uh, any one member of the Senate can put what's called a hold on any bill, any motion, any procedure, any nomination. And what I mean by hold is everything in the Senate operates by unanimous consent. So in order for them to proceed from uh, the morning business to the afternoon's business to move to, to debate on one bill to another debate or to amendment, all 100 members of the Senate have to agree. They all have to provide their consent by not objecting. If just one member of the Senate objects, it stops the whole thing. And then they have to go through a whole other set of procedures to try to end debate uh, and end the... It's, oh, what else is that called, by the way? Some of you, I'm sure you've heard of this, or at least talked about it. It's called a filibuster, uh, where if one person stops the whole thing time and time again, it's a filibuster. Uh, in the old days, they used to talk about it by having one guy go to the House floor and speak for 24 hours until they passed out, and then they could move on. But today, uh, they can just notify the majority leader that they're objecting to an issue, and they'll, that, that issue may never come up for a vote because they don't have the time or the votes to overcome that one person. Town, 64 town meetings uh, all over the place. We've done uh, town meetings in you know, Springfield, Colorado, and Walsh, Colorado, all the way up to Julesburg and Sedgwick, and uh, here in Fort Collins, Bertha. So 65, 64 town meetings. We've put on, I think I calculated, 40,000 miles last year. And that was only being home on weekends, on a Saturday and Sunday, uh, or Monday once in a while, and then every third or fourth week for, uh, for that whole period. I know uh, I ran into Congressman Schaefer many times out to Eastern Colorado when I was growing up for, for town meetings that he was doing, and, uh, or at least saw him. I think I even saw you one time walking into the Yuma Pioneer years and years ago. Uh, <laughs> you were just, what, 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 19, I don't know, 96 or 7 or yeah, something like that. Yeah, about, yeah. My first year. <laughs> I was still in high school. No, I was in high school. I, can't. <laughs> yes. I was still in high school. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean that. Yeah, yeah, thanks, yeah thanks. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> Where did you get your law degree? Uh, from University of Colorado. Okay, yeah, I got my law degree from the University of Colorado, and, and uh, discussions and where it is that you're going to go in your future to be leaders of this country. The United States total economic output, our GDP. Our gross domestic product is over $15 trillion. The next closest economy is who? China. And what do you think their economic output is? More than their debt. It's $5 trillion. 
So their economic output in China is $5 trillion. Ours is $15 trillion, almost $16 trillion in GDP. What happens, though, if we're no longer leading the world's economy? What happens if China or India overcomes us and their GDP is greater than ours? Well, then what happens is this. People around the world no longer look to us for our ideas on what makes an economy grow and strong. People no longer look to the United States for our ideas on what should take place in terms of peace in the Middle East, how we should treat nations like Israel. They no longer look to the United States to solve problems, but instead they look to others. And so the values and the ideas of other nations will be the ones that the world Think about I'm from you, a little tiny town, Eastern Plains. I grew up there. Our family owns a farm equipment dealership. So really what I learned about uh, you know, business, uh, what I learned about sort of government came from that upbringing. My dad served on city council for about 12 years, and I got interested in it uh, when he was on city council in that whole time. Actually, Mike Bennett was on the city council with, with my dad. Uh, so you could eliminate one-third of our budget, close the Department of Education, on uh, paying, paying our debts, to finance our, our debts. And as that grows, it's strong with, with the kind of unfettered uh, discretionary spending that we have. Now, we just passed a budget, the House did, last week. Um, so this year right here represents past year's debt to debt, excuse me, debt to GDP ratios. World War II, we actually owed more money than the size of our economy. In the years following, the decades yeah. following, <coughs> um, so you said the green was the current budget you passed. Um, what are the chances that it'll, I mean, actually happen like that? <laughs> no. <laughs> um, I, I wish the, the, the Senate has not passed a budget in over a thousand days. Uh, can you imagine uh, not worrying about anything and just saying, oh, we're just going to spend today, I'm going to spend, I'm working this summer, and I'm not really going to count up how much money we have because we just spend right. And the bill you passed was a oil drilling bill, yes. right? Um, so, like, how hard was that just to get through committee and pass and everything? It, you know, that one actually had a lot of great support. My, my, my chief co-sponsor on the bill was a Democrat from Texas, so it was a bipartisan bill. Uh, the bill itself simply said this, and it dealt with a very narrow provision of law. Uh, right now, on, when it comes to outer continental shelf drilling, uh, whether it's the coast of California, uh, the east coast, most of the Gulf of Mexico or Alaska, uh, the EPA has jurisdiction over clean air permits. In one particular case up in Alaska, this clean air exploratory permit for for oil. This is a permit that would last for 45 days. That's it. It'd be good for 45 days. You'd go in there, explore whether or not the, the oil's actually there. And if it is, then you have to go in and apply for a whole another set of permits that could take years. But this is just one permit for 45 days to see if it's worth your time to go get the next set of permits. It's taken six years to get that 45-day permit. And the amount of time it's taken to get that 45-day permit this same company has drilled 400 wells around the world. Jobs up overseas, energy overseas, but not here. So what I said in this bill was say, you have six months, EPA, to give a yes or a no to the exploratory permit. That's it. If you say no, fine. They can go through whatever remedies they go to if you say no. But you have to make a decision within six months that we can move forward with energy production. Uh, so that, that bill passed. Um, it actually you know, had opposition from <coughs> people like Henry Waxman, California. Uh, there were some people in California on the coast states that don't want to have it off of their coast. There were other people in California that did off of their coast. So uh, it was it passed overwhelmingly uh, out of the committee. It passed overwhelmingly off the floor. It's been introduced in the Senate by a group of bipartisan senators. Uh, you know, Mary Landrieu, a Democrat from Louisiana, Mark Begich, a Democrat from Alaska, and uh, Lisa Murkowski, a Republican from Alaska, and uh, Bitter from Louisiana, Republican from Louisiana. Have all introduced the bill over there. So, oh, out of all the committees that you serve on, which one probably be your I should have, I should have talked more about the committee. I apologize. The Energy and Commerce Committee is the only committee that I'm on, uh, and the reason is it's considered. Uh, there are certain committees that if you serve on that committee, then you're not allowed to be on without waivers and some other weird things that, in the rules of the Republican Conference. You're not allowed to be on any other committee. So for now, I'm only on Energy and Commerce. Yeah, we have, uh, we have, now this is kind of funny because I'll, I'll share a story that one of my friends is running for the Senate, I'll share his story with you. Um, we have uh, about 18, we're allowed to hire 18 people. Uh, the rules say you can have 18 full-time staff and then 
like four part-time staff in addition to that. But we have about 14 working for us. That's the state budget, the state of Colorado. Half of the state budget comes from the federal government. Half of the money the state government spends doesn't even come from taxpayers in Colorado. Well, excuse me, state taxpayers in Colorado. It comes from federal taxpayers across the country to fund uh, the state of Colorado. So you want to talk about the size of government, it's so big, the federal government is so big that it even funds half of the state of Colorado.